Andrew McCart, IFL TV, probably sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with my good friend, Regis Brogue. Regis, it seems the last time I spoke to you face to face like this was a long time ago. It's been Zoom call after Zoom call, and I'm sick and tired of them. And it's good to finally get this interview face to face, man. How's things? Uh, everything is excellent, brother. Real good. Personal wise, everything is excellent. You know, I definitely get ready for a fight again. You know, that's why I'm here, but. Everything is wonderful. Well, the reason why we're here, we're at Combat Chain, we've just sat a wonderful presentation. I mean, I was sitting, well, I was standing off to you a little bit, and I was watching you. You seemed very engrossed in it. You were listening very intently. So, what were the biggest takeaways from? What was your first impression from Combat Chain and what was said today? So, the, I mean, our first thing on my mind is like the whole the whole NFT thing, right? So, I don't honestly, I really don't know too much about it. But for what they, for what I understand, they said you can you can take a picture or something like that, a, a moment in time and you can sell it and then that person can sell it and you can sell it and you can sell it and all that money comes back you know you get a percentage the, the original owner the athlete gets a percentage of all of that you know so for me like just thinking of something like that that's like that's crazy that's like next level stuff that's like something all uh, like our like the fighters and stuff we can really monetize that type of stuff you know like that's it's like next level isn't it's, it's Next level, next level type of stuff, and it's just wonderful for the sport. For obviously, as well, it was said up there as well that 99% of fighters they don't get to the wealth that maybe you've seen, or they don't get to the stages of the world champion that you see, but they do put in the work. Josh Taylor's here, Terence Crawford's here, yourself is here, Usyk was here. You're, you're a small group that have made it to this point in your career. So, what does what do you think that Combat Team does for? The young fighters coming through, the kids, the, the the kids that are 18, 19 in the gym want to turn professional. What do you think that combat chain can do for them? I mean, same thing, man. Monetize, bro. Cause like I, I had a hard route. If people don't know me, like I had a hard route coming up. I my first like 11 fights, like seven of those fights, I fought for no money. Like one, I made zero dollars. You know, so if I could have, if I could have had something like that a long time ago, man, I, it would have, you know, monetizing things. You know, like most in most. Most fighters don't get to the level that I'm at, that Josh Taylor, that Terrence Crawford, you know, Roy Jones. Most fighters don't get to that level making real money that make this their real job, you know, um, because, like I said, I had to work and all that stuff when I was younger. So when you have, like, something like this combat chain, you can just monetize it, man. Like, we put in, the athletes, the fighters, they put in so much work, you know, and for, and, and it's really, you could say, like, some of the fighters that never make it, they put in almost the same amount of work that the fighters that do make it, you know. Um, but we, of course, we get paid, and some of them don't. But so for now, for, you know, the combat chain to be able to monetize that, it's like it's game-changing. A lot of fighters that you said, mentioned there that even though they're great fighters, they don't sell the tickets. So sometimes they don't get on the shows or they don't sell that. But it feels like combat chain will help them. To build that fan base, to get them tickets sold and stuff like that, which will make, we'll see more champions, we'll see more guys like more Regis Progress, more Josh Taylors and Trent Crawfords. Do you see that? Yes, I definitely think so, for sure, man. I mean, of course, it's just, it's still in the opening stages right now, but I, I definitely could see that, you know. I mean, and of course, that's what I hope. I, I hope that all the athletes, all the, the, the fighters here, you know, that the ones that, the, the people that's coming up in the chain, I hope they could make money because, man, we train, most of us train our whole life for this type of stuff. It's a very short career, and most of us train our whole life to do that. And just like you said, it's like 99.9% .9 of the people that actually get to that level and make real money, make it their job. So with this, you know, they can hopefully, you know, people can monetize things and really make money. Josh Taylor's here. I'm going to be stupid not to mention him. I mean, Again, when we speak, we do speak about Josh Taylor. Sometimes when I speak with Josh Taylor, we speak about Regis Progress. Because, like I said to you before in the past, that, that fight when I sat ringside, we're intertwined, it, seems it, like it, it does, it we're does. It's, it's like so, someone's bringing you together. I don't know if you were sharing the same bus here. I mean, I don't know why Josh wasn't sitting next to his coach and his gym mates, but he was sitting right next to you. At the same table, he's right there. Um, yeah, we had like we had the, we in the same hotel. We rode in the same bus together. Um, we at the same table. We around each other. All you know now we like around each other and stuff like that. So it's like me and him are like intertwined some type of way. We're like we're intertwined now, basically. Rematch. I mean, you said that you won the fight, the first fight. I've got a little clip out there in the hallway before this whole show. You said I won. He says, "Listen, I won fair and square." He says, "You'll get your chance and stuff." Right. Do you see that ever happening? I mean, George, he's got Jack Carroll in the way in February. Then he's talking about going up to 147. You've made your dreams, well, your hopes and aspirations to still be a champion at 140. Do you see that rematch happening? I think it could. You know, if, if everything, if everything, I think if everything plays itself right, um, I'll be a champion at 140. I'll make a few defenses. Go up to 147, fight Josh Taylor. Maybe, maybe um, go ahead and you know get rid of those belts. 
fight Josh Taylor, then maybe come back down to 140. It depends, you know, that's kind of, hopefully this interview, maybe in like the two years, all that stuff will probably come true, you know, so that's kind of in my mind right now, you know, I'll do that, and you know, I, I will go up, I think that's the, for me, that's like the only fight I'll go up to 147, just, just for Josh. Just for Josh. Just, just for Josh, you're, like, you're in the twine, you're in the twine, man, so, I mean, Jack Carroll's here, uh, he's the same sort of build as you, same size, southpaw. When I look at your styles, I think almost similar. Yeah. The fight, so it's, do you feel like Josh is, is for something like Jack and yourself already? Do you think this might be an easier fight for, uh, have you seen Jack fight, I suppose? Have you seen him? I did say, I did. Do you think he's got a similar style to you? Nah, not really. I, I, I mean, maybe a little bit, not really. Um, like the thing is, like, well, when I fought Josh, you know, I, we 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 fought. Me and Josh. That's why I think that's why we intertwine right now because we just me and me and Josh just fought each other. It wasn't no really boxing going wrong. It was just we. I want to hurt Josh. Seemed like he wanted to hurt me. We fought each other, right? So it wasn't really too much of um, boxing going on. But like when I box now, I feel like I'm becoming more of a boxer and becoming more slick and stuff like that. So, but um, anyways, getting back to the point with Jack Catterall, maybe a, a few similarities with me and him. But it, I just want to see the fight. How do you see the fight going? I, I I can't go against. I'm not like what Josh said. I think I definitely think like me and him are still number one and two. Maybe number one A and B now. Like I yeah. Like how we said it before. Like I remember when I talked to Derek Chisora, I said yeah we're number one and two. Maybe like one A and one B. Maybe we like I still see it like that. I still think he's probably like um like yeah probably one of the best in the division for sure. Terence Crawford's here, I mean, you, you are not far away from his division. I mean, you are good friends, you're always laughing and joking. I think I saw you, he's always came over and yeah, made a, yeah. a joke with you and you're always uh, having fun, but have you ever thought about that? I mean, like like I said, boxing is a funny sport, especially with the combat chain happening as well. The, the sport's evolving. Have you ever thought in your mind, pro grade versus Crawford? Has that ever crossed your mind? I, I always said I want to fight Crawford. You know, and you know why I always I always want to fight Crawford because I respect him so much. I think he's so, so fucking good. I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm not gonna tell him that to his face, but I think like he's he's really. I think he's really good. You know, so I always want to. You know, for me, I want. I'm a fighter. I want to fight the best. So I definitely always want to fight Crawford, but. I'm standing 140. <laughs> I yeah. definitely. I, but right now, I'm standing 140. The only way, I, the only way I'll say I'll fight the the one fight at 47 will be for um, Josh Taylor, just because me and him have history. But nobody really can't pull me to 147. I just, it's just a. I just want to stay at 140. I feel like I can be comfortable at 140. I feel like I can just, you know, at least, you know, be a champion again at 140, and then maybe go to 147. But probably by the time I go to 47, Bro Crawford probably be he'll be at 54. He'll be retired or something like that. So. You know, I don't think me and Crawford will probably ever see each other. But boxing, you never know. It is a funny sport. We might, we might fight. Exactly. Well, they're talking about Josh and Crawford. There's been chat talks about that, and I'm not saying that Josh. Obviously, you know me and Josh. I'm probably biased in every sense of the word, but that's just what it is. How it is, sorry. But do do you think that looking at the 147 pound division with a, a Spence and maybe the Ugas aside, do you think something like Josh would be uh, Crawford's toughest, uh, one of the toughest fights for him at 147? I don't think so. I, I can't see it, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Like, for, I mean, Josh is very, very good, but I, I think Crawford is just a different monster. I'm not gonna lie. Like right now, I think Crawford is a different monster. I think, um, the only one I want to see Crawford end up with is is Errol. That's it. You know, I mean, you, we 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 saw Crawford. You know, his size. You know, he's he's Josh is tall, but Crawford is. Thicker. He's thicker. He's stronger. I mean, he was just wrestling around and shit. Like, the, mo the motherfucker's strong, you know? And so I just want to see him with, I want to see him with Errol. Because Errol is another, just a, a, a physical specimen, just so big. Especially at 147. Errol's like fucking size of Roy Jones. And he's, he fights at 147. Yeah, it's crazy. So that's the only, you know, that's the only fight that I want to see Crawford is just, you know, um, with Errol Spence. Well, that's the fight you want to see. A fight I want to see is we just progress back in the ring. When can we see that, bro? Man, that's why I'm here, man. That's why I'm in Dubai. So I'm hearing good things right now. You know, they're saying I probably fight here. Ne yeah, I probably be fighting in Dubai um, next. It's not, no it's not nothing official right now, but um, they saying this is probably one of the. It's it's getting closer to me fighting here, and it's um, the dude is probably Tyrone McKenna. So Tyrone McKenna. Yeah, I think so. I mean, like I said, nothing is nothing is official yet, but. That's kind of what's been whispered and thrown. He's talking shit. He's talking shit. He's talking shit. I thought he was gonna be here today. I was. I was actually expecting him. I wasn't expecting Josh. You know because um, I, I talked to I talked to somebody else and they said you know 
I know everybody was coming. And they said they said Tyron with McKenna was gonna be here, but they said Josh wasn't coming. And then he ended up coming, so he like surprised me when we got on the bus together. But I was expecting Tyron McKenna to be here. He's not here, so you know. Listen, it's like I said, yeah, I, we've done a Zoom call about that fight, so I probably won't delve too much in it. It's a fight I want to see. I mean, his game, he comes to fight. It's, and I mean, you've been at the ring for a long time, so it's definitely a good fight for you to get there. If there's ring rust, if you ever believe in that thing, to get that off. But Regis, an absolute pleasure to see you again. Your beautiful wife is over there, probably itching to get back to the hotel and get some dinner or some lunch. But listen, stick in, stay safe, and I'll speak to you soon, brother. Thank you. Brother, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Regis.